There is a fish in this tank. Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Now there were two promises I made in last week's video. Firstly, that I would put out a video this week, tick. And secondly, that there would be fish in this tank. Now, I would like to start off with a little disclaimer. In this video, I'm going to show you something that I'm going to do, which is not a good idea. In fact, there's actually two things which I'm doing, which are, to some extent, very bad ideas. But that doesn't mean they are impossible. It just means that probably nine times out of 10, people don't have success with doing it. And it's my selection of fish choice. Now, I will show you the new fish I bought in a, in a second. Uh, I did pick a fish from the coral farm for the, uh, for the tank first. I put that in yesterday. And the reason I put it in yesterday was just to make sure that the water isn't completely toxic, although all the tests were coming back fine. And uh, I picked the uh, Springer's Damsel. And the reason I picked the Springer's Damsel, I probably shouldn't say this, was because it was the one that I liked the least. I will have the clownfish in here, uh, which I've had for 12 years, but I didn't want to risk it, basically. So I put the damsel in. Damsel was completely fine. So uh, then I went fish shopping and I put in the um, like the, the Fritz bacteria to make sure everything's okay. And um, it's, uh, it appears to be all going well so far. Anyway, <clears throat> let me get on to the fish that I've got. Right now, before I show you the exciting new fish, I feel like the Springer's damsel needs an honorable mention. Uh, as I said before, these damselfish eat flatworms. This fish is the pioneer of this tank. It put its life on the line so that this tank can, uh, can, can start, basically. So these are great little fish. The sad thing is, in the blue lights of our aquariums, they don't show off their like, like real vibrant colours. And although the light looks quite white at the moment, it's because we've got a filter on the camera. But these are great little damselfish. I would recommend one of these for everyone. They're not very aggressive in comparison to some damselfish. And uh, and yeah, so as I said, I think we need to, uh, you know, we, he needs to be recognized as the original fish before you forget him uh, in favor of all the other fish I'm about to show you. Now I promise you, I will show you the new fish after this next section. But there was one thing I wanted to show you, it's sort of like a public service announcement. And I mentioned it in one of my previous videos and I get so many comments about it. And that is that one, there's, there's only two little, two updates for with regards to sort of this tank and equipment. Um, and that is, the first one is that I am putting Vaseline on all of the hinges. And this will stop them from going rusty. Uh, so after a little while, the hinges on our tanks go rusty uh, because of obviously the, the salt creep and the, and the salty atmosphere. Now if you're not show, sure how much you to put on, if you ever had a prostate exam, about that much. <laughs> Now, someone commented on my videos the other day saying my videos aren't suitable for children. Now, they're not designed for children, but uh, I, when I, I now understand why. But uh, yeah, so this is, I put those on all my tanks. Your, your, um, your, your hinges will never go rusty, basically, if you do this. And um, you, you do it once and it literally lasts for years. And the second thing I wanted to show you is that the GHL maxi doses have turned up. So these are for the automatic water changes. Uh, they're the reason I did a, um, I cut a hole in the back of the tank so that um, I connect them to the coral farm. And once these are set up, I will show you the entire uh, run, basically. Right now, these are some of the new fish which I'm acclimating for the angelfish tank. The rest of them are currently in the coral farm, and there's a reason they're in the coral farm. Uh, and it's because I, well, I'll show you in a minute. But I did, it's not really an angelfish tank if it's just one angelfish. In theory, if I put two tangs in, it's more of a tang tank than an angelfish tank. So I thought in for a penny, in for a pound, uh, and I thought I'd get three reef safe or relatively reef safe angelfish. Uh, two of them are the majestic, which is here, and the blue face, which is this one. The final one that I would like to go with the king eye is the regal angelfish, uh, which unfortunately I couldn't get today. Uh, and the final fish in this box is a Starkey damselfish. Now, these are my favorite damselfish. You can see with the, the contrast of the yellow and the blue is so vibrant. It's, it's much more vibrant than some of the other similar colored damselfish. What is good to see though, is that the majestic is, is sort of squaring off against the blue face because the majestic is a little bit smaller. So the fact that they are, that one's not just harassing the other already is, is a good sign. 
because um and the other thing about angels is they often don't eat very well whereas these two are both eating like pigs now a minute ago i said that fish selection was the thing which is a bad idea now those of you that don't know keeping angelfish together is not a good idea similar to mixing tangs but angelfish uh, can be relatively aggressive with each other so I don't know if the Majestic and the Blue Face are going to get on. I don't know if the Majestic, Blue Face, Regal and King Eye are going to get on. But what I am willing to do, and I'm committed to do, is that if there is aggression, I'm willing to take the fish out. I'm willing to strip down all the rock work and start again if I need to. Now this is what's important. If you're willing to do what is necessary to help the fish if it doesn't go well, then I have no problem with people mixing things that potentially will be a risk. With you, whether it comes to mixing tangs, or you'll see in a minute when I take in the coral farm, I'm doing something even more crazy than this. If, if you're willing to put the effort in to, as I said, maybe even entirely strip down your whole tank to take out and, and, and help the fish as needed, then I have no problem with people experimenting. The problem comes when you put a, t a, a fish in and you're not actually willing to do that. You let it get chased and it gets chased and chased and chased and eventually one fish kills the other. That's not fair. Whereas because this is a tank that, well, that's brand new, there's no coral in it, uh, I have no particular love of the rock work, obviously other than the penis rock, um, which I know you all love. Um, I have, yeah, so I have no problem literally removing the rock work and starting again. So uh, that's what, that, that's, my, that's my bit out of the way. I know people in the comments will say this is a bad idea, this is not, not the right thing to do. As I said, I have no problem people doing it as long as you're willing to put the effort in to put it right if you need to. The other thing I need to make sure people are clear of, although these angels are relatively reef safe, that's only in comparison to other large angelfish. These angelfish are not reef safe. If I put an A-can in there, they'll definitely eat it. It's as simple as that. So don't go out buying these fish now because I know that's what happens. When I got a box fish, people kept messaging me saying they got box fish. So don't go and buy these fish. These are not good fish for reef tanks. Uh, the whole point of this project is that it's an experiment. I will take you into the coral farm now and I will show you the even crazier thing that I'm doing. But I've already seen what's happened with this and so far it appears to be working. Right now, as you can see, we are back in the coral farm and this is probably one of the most risky experiments that I've done. Now, I've thought about doing this for many, many years. I've never found quite the right fish and at the right time where it would be easy to separate them if required. But what I'm trying to do is pair up my, uh, I think it was a black ice percular clownfish with a tiny, tiny male, like metallic red maroon clownfish. Now, though they are, they're not like Ocellaris and percular clownfish, which are, are quite similar. Maroon clownfish actually are sort of a different subspecies of clownfish. And they also get quite a lot bigger. Now the only way that this experiment will work is if the male is extremely submissive and if that happens, the female will stay larger than the male. The problem is, because maroon clownfish grow so big, the male can sometimes get bigger than the female and then will turn into a female himself. So, providing I can get that to work, uh, then it should be okay. Now so far, I'll show you properly in a minute, uh, she has accepted him. He's there and she's, uh, yeah, she's there. <clears throat> but it's, and it's going really, really well. He does have a couple of like minor ripped fins, but I will show you the culprit for that. That actually wasn't her. Uh, and I will, I'll show you the, the culprit for that now because he, the culprit is currently in prison. Right, so we'll get the culprit out of the way. First things first, this is a six line wrasse for people that don't know what six line wrasse is. Six line wrasse are absolute bastards they will attack anything new to the tank. I will be completely honest with you, I was so worried about how she would take to having a new, uh, a new tank mate, I didn't really think that any of the other tank mates would be overly worried about her. Um, well, not her, but about him. But uh, you could, for whatever reason, the six-line rash just took a dislike to him and that was it. And as you can see, he really is a very, very metallic red. The camera doesn't even pick it up properly. Uh, but you get maroon clownfish in all different um, sizes, colours, but you can see that this one is really, really bright. And when I saw it, I thought to myself, this is the time, because I can put him in this tank, they're easy to separate. I've got an acclimation box if required uh, to, to separate, to put him in. Uh, whereas, as I said, you can see this become a prison for uh, the six line. 
but so far she has virtually paid no attention to him. When he very, very first went in, I've been sitting with him for hours. When he first went in, she uh, came over, investigated him, and he did this like little submissive, you know, the little submissive clownfish wiggle that you see quite often uh, the males will do to the females. But other than that, she has shown no aggression at all. She can see she's not, she's not, she's not interested. Um, which as th this is the best I can ask for at this stage. The fact that she hasn't literally taken a bite out of him is uh, is the uh, the best thing I can ask for. But he's so pretty, and even if even if she doesn't accept him, I will just end up putting him in uh, one of the coral trays because there's there's plenty of room for uh, for other fish in here. So uh, so yeah, that that's it so far. So, as I said, so far it's working. The king eye is in here. There is a reason I didn't put the king eye with the other the other two. Firstly, the king eye is considerably more expensive than the other two, uh, but also um, it's quite a bit bigger as well. So if I'm going to add it, or not, not if when I add it at a later date, I'm not adding a smaller angelfish to um, to bigger angelfish. I'm adding a much bigger angelfish to smaller ones. And when I get the regal, I'll make sure that one's a similar size to this one as well. So all things, all things going well, we can have a very interesting mixture of fish in, uh, in the tank. As you can see, I've got a few new soft corals in here for one of my clients, uh, and the king eye has had no interest in those. So it looks like I can definitely have some corals in, in, the, uh, in the tank, in the, in the water box tank. It just depends on what variety. But we'll start with some basic ones. And, uh, and then we'll move up from there. Right, now that's it for today, guys. As always, I'll say a massive thank you to everyone on the Sports Channel on Patreon. Uh, what I've done, all the fish are now currently in the tank. You can't see them because they're all hiding, except probably the Starkey Damsel, which is a bloody legend. Um, and what I'll do is I'll update you on the next video with regards to their progress. So um, wish me luck. This is the first like I need is that they will get on, and the second like I'm gonna need is that they don't eat coral. So. If you are enjoying this project, now is a good time to subscribe. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.